the Australian weather is fairly unchangeable in general. But let's have a look at December, which of course is summer for Australia. The centre of Australia is in the region of the arid zone, and therefore is dry and dusty regardless of the time of year. However, the ITCZ is well into the southern hemisphere, and found just above the north coast. As a result, strong convective weather can be found along the northern coastlines. Since it is summer, in the seas around Australia, tropical cyclones will form following the paths shown. In the northwest of Australia, these have been termed the Willy Willies. The southern coastline of Australia is exposed to the trailing edges of the polar front depressions and their associated ridges throughout the year. These bring the typical weather of the warm and cold front. Between these frontal depressions are the associated ridges, which give a welcome spell of clear but cool dry weather. On occasions, a strong southerly cold wind is experienced behind active cold fronts. These are called the southerly busters. In the winter month of June, the dominating pressure systems are the subtropical highs in the interior of the continent. These give dry, dusty air to most of Australia, and are a common reason for the bushfires. To the south, polar front depressions and their ridges still sweep through, bringing the usual mixture of cloud and precipitation. The phenomenon of the southerly buster can be found in southern America around Buenos Aires. However, here this cold southerly wind is called the Pamperos. Most of southern America is controlled by the passage of the polar front depressions to the south and the convective weather found nearer the equator to the north. This convective weather is further intensified by the ITCZ, which dips considerably into central South America in December. The last area to examine will be North America. Let's take a look at what the major pressure systems and weather might be in December. The main weather and pressure systems are the polar front depressions which pass across America just north of 35 degrees north. These are active in winter, bringing snow and extensive rain towards the east coastlines. These systems have a greatly enhanced icing risk and freezing rain is a very real hazard around the warm fronts. Thermal depressions can often be seen over the Great Lakes because the water is warmer than the land. Heavy snow showers are a persistent problem in these areas. The Gulf of Mexico has very varied weather. Occasionally, very cold polar air from the North America high can penetrate into the area, dropping temperatures to below freezing. Conversely, Warm tropical air can move north from the outflow of the Bermuda High, giving rise to low stratus and fog. During June, the weather can change dramatically. Notice that the polar front has moved northward, to about 45 degrees north, and is also significantly weaker than in winter. Along the northeast coastline, Persistent fog and low stratus develop due to the very cold Labrador sea current cooling the general westerly air flows. Still in June, Central America warms significantly and has a lower pressure than in winter. This is called the North America or Canadian low. Within this area, expect convective cloud and thunderstorm activity from trailing cold fronts. Further south towards the Mississippi, this heating is greatly enhanced and very strong supercell thunderstorms develop, especially in spring, when both warm surface conditions and cold upper air conditions are found. These cause massive instability and spawn some of the deadliest tornadoes, giving rise to the term Tornado Alley. The Gulf of Mexico is characterised by frequent but isolated thermal thunderstorms, which are most active late afternoon, and produce spectacular lightning. But the most dangerous of all the weather systems in North America are the hurricanes. 
In the Atlantic, these start off from the easterly waves near West Africa and grow as they move towards the eastern seaboard of the United States. They frequently pass over Jamaica and persistently cause problems to airports in Florida and around the Gulf of Mexico. However, hurricanes also develop off the southwestern coastline of North America, and although they tend to move into the Pacific Ocean, some can curve back towards the Gulf of California. Hopefully from this lesson, you will have gained an understanding of the broad aspects of the main weather and pressure systems affecting particular areas of the globe. Remember though, these are generalizations, and the weather is something that frequently surprises us. Conditions can and do vary significantly from what we expect. Be well prepared before any flight, whether it be a long or short haul. An important point to learn is the variability of the weather. Never assume that what is forecast will always happen. Be alert for the worst, expect the worst, and you will be better prepared if the worst does happen. In part two of this CD-ROM, which is called Weather Briefing, you will learn how to use and then interpret the information available to you.